Episode two takes place 10 years after uh, episode one. And now Anakin is a Padawan learner, apprentice Jedi, and Obi-Wan is his mentor. Padme finished her term as the queen of Naboo and has gone on to become a senator. The movie is essentially a story about Anakin and Anakin's uh, dealing with his emotions, the difficulty of his uh, being torn between his duty and his emotional uh, needs which relate to uh, Padme. Must be difficult having sworn your love to the Jedi, not being able to do the things you like. Or be with the people that I love. Are you allowed to love? thought that was forbidden for a Jedi. It's uh, the beginning of the end of democracy in the Republic. We go to Camino, which is a very exotic, more fantastic science fiction -y kind of planet. Very surreal. And we also go to Geonosis, which is a planet of uh, insect-like creatures. In terms of the scope, visually, the amount of planets, the vehicles that have been designed for this, this is the most ambitious of all the various chapters that have been made already. This is back to the spirit of adventure, the excitement, uh, the drama. Everything is in this script that made people fall in love with the original Star Wars. Since episode one, he'll have been um, training Anakin heavily. Patience. Use the force. Think. Sorry, Master. They're like um, two old friends who've been together a long time and who spend too much time together. You know I don't like it when you do that. Sorry, Master. I forgot you don't like flying. Well, you've lost him. If you'll excuse me. I hate it when he does that. Obi-Wan Kenobi's worried. Anakin's a bit uh, headstrong and um, overconfident. Boy, he has exceptional skills. But he still has much to learn, Master. His abilities have made him, well, arrogant. He loves Obi-Wan uh, because he is sort of a, a father figure for him. But at the same time, there still is that resistance because Anakin does want to break free of, of what he's doing right now. I'm ready for the trials, but he feels that I'm too unpredictable. He won't let me move on. She is now a senator. She had been the queen, but her reign ended. And the new queen asks her to stay and help out and be a senator. So she's still in the political scene. <laughs> Do you have any idea who is behind this attack? We will find out who's trying to kill you, Padme. I promise you. Escort the senator back to Naboo. She'll be safer there. They have to travel together a lot because he's protecting her. Throughout the film, they're put in these very extreme settings because they're in hiding. You're making fun of me. Mm, no, no, I'd be much too frightened to tease a senator. <laughs> She really struggles with um, sort of the, the career versus romance um, issue. You're starting to become a Jedi. I'm, I'm a senator. We could keep it a secret. We'd be living a lie. I couldn't do that. Could you, Anakin? He understands that as a Jedi, he's not allowed to fall in love, even though he feels so passionately for Padme. It's that confusion uh, that, that really causes him all of his anxiety. This one, obviously, we, we kind of know what happens to Anakin. Um, we just don't know how and why. It's all Obi-Wan's fault. He's holding me back. You're not all powerful, Anakin. Well, I should be. Anakin's flaws, like all classic mythological heroes, are the flaws that everyone carries with them. The issues that he's confronting is that a, a good Jedi overcomes those flaws and um, kind of goes above the normal human tragedy that most people have to uh, experience. What is it? Pain, suffering, death, I feel. Anakin is starting to display some interesting characteristics that need to be watched closer. Evil isn't just pure evil. A lot of times it comes from good. Episode two is sort of like a 
an extended portrayal of how evil evolves. And it really allows you to, I think, feel for his struggle much more. And I think that uh, most people would make some of the same choices that Anakin does. It's no different than having somebody in your family that you love who's got a serious problem. There's not much you can do. You don't stop loving them. And I think that's what's going to happen, especially with somebody as good as Hayden. Cut. I go on a kind of Dick Tracy detective spree. I've always wanted to have my own ship, and he gets one, and he gets to take off on his own adventure in this one. A bit like Luke Skywalker does in his X-Wing when he goes to find Yoda. They are using a bounty hunter named Jango Fett to create a clone army. Wait. Your clones are very impressive. You must be very proud. They'll do their job well. I needed a Jedi who was an older Jedi that had left the Order, who was very good. I decided to go with a more elegant, sophisticated kind of person, reminiscent of uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi as an older man. I play a character called Count Dooku, a battle-scarred Jedi. He's obviously a man of immense power, mental power and physical power. You must join me, Obi-Wan, and together we will destroy the Sith. Common skills of preparing for war, there can be no doubt of that. My role apparently is that of a mediator um, who believes in peace and the power of negotiation until it seems that it's absolutely inevitable and nothing else can be done. I will create a grand army of the Republic to counter the increasing threats of the Separatists. This is actually the beginning of the Clone War, so there's a lot of intense action sequences in this film. This is the heyday, the golden age of Jedi. We see Jedi in large battle scenes, you know, battling as a large group. And before, we've never seen that before. There's always been a couple of Jedi fighting each other. It's a bigger part, and I do more things that it. That just means that I have to work a little harder, making sure I stay alive for the next. <laughs> I look at these as the swashbuckling adventures you know, of the modern era. To work on a film that has the scope of, of the Star Wars you know, saga, it's kind of like a dream come true for an actor, because you're doing something that you know is going to last forever. What more can an actor want in terms of being in a story which is immortalized in the eyes of millions of people? It's very rewarding, very enthralling and it's magic. I think people like seeing, you know, themselves in a fantastical world. It's really like a, a fun trip for the imagination. It's just uh, the story of, of people wanting to break free from their surroundings and, and reach new ground. The struggle from, you know, the good side and, and, and the dark side. It's something that we, we all deal with that which I guess is a, a theme in all of the Star Wars movies.